Calling CQ South America. CQ South America. South America. I'm currently traveling in Paraguay, South America. And right now I'm asking questions related to the status of indigenous groups, deforestation, and Paraguay's unregulated marijuana industries. South America. So I'll be producing multiple parts that include these adventures, so join me on this journey of exploring a country that rarely seems to land on the international news, but it's definitely a significant part of South America. Welcome to Paraguay, everyone. So today I'm actually headed to a conference on sustainable agricultural practices with some of the Casije, or leaders of a tribe called the Ache, as well as some Christian missionaries who have worked alongside the Ache for over 40 years now. So here's why this is important. The Ache who live in Puerto Vara here have about 821 hectares of land. Over half of this land is virgin Atlantic forest but none of it helps the community financially. And that can potentially be a problem because if you don't have a lot of income and you're looking for alternatives, the easiest way to get an alternative source of income is to clear the forest. And the Ache don't wanna do that. So the forests here have been assessed for certification, but it's been five years and so far nothing has happened. So that's why the conference that we're going to is important because the Minister of the Environment and Sustainable Development will be there and the Ache are hoping to talk to him because they're wondering so far why this project has been stalled while other neighbors nearby who do have forests have already had their forests certified. So why not an indigenous group in Paraguay? So we're not entirely sure what's going to happen, um, but that's what's going on. Las palabras del Ministro del Ambiente y Desarrollo Sostenible de nuestro querido Paraguay, el Ministro César Ariel Oviedo Verdún. Nos estamos enfrentando a momentos críticos, a momentos importantes, que si hoy no empezamos a tomar las medidas y las decisiones necesarias, inclusive corremos el riesgo de que nuestra misma especie se extinga del planeta Tierra. Un gobierno solo no puede con todo. Tiene que ser la unión mancomunada y sincera de todo un pueblo, de toda la raza humana. Que Dios le bendiga. Muchísimas gracias y estamos a las órdenes. Muy bien, así de esta manera. Está el tema de la certificación de los Los H avanzaron para su chacra autoconsumo. No sé si esto será un impedimento para que Tenemos que sentarnos a verlo realmente, porque si no vamos a castigar a ellos mismos, será muy penoso. Por favor. 
So, after the conference wrapped, we sent a message to the minister, and so far we haven't heard back. This just kind of shows that again, this project has been stalled. Multiple government representatives, the mayor of Nadanhal, the minister, other contacts who were there as well at this conference, were all positive, at least about the efforts here and what we were trying to do, but just nothing moves forward. So it's kind of disappointing. We did have a chance to talk to a woman from Costa Rica who's on the front lines of, of curbing some of the pollution that comes from banana tree production in Costa Rica. And she also has done a lot of research for different organizations in Paraguay, helping to assess the environmental impact of the soybean industry in Paraguay. So I want to show some of the conversations that we had with her because she's worked closely with indigenous groups in Costa Rica and she has a lot of value and a lot of insights to be able to add to these topics. So Puerto Barra um, is a small indigenous community, um, but so we have uh, about 68 families, 260, 270 by latest uh, census. <laughs> by local standards, they're still very poor. But by indigenous, it's, they seem like they have all got, it, got it all together. And it is the soybeans. I mean, it's the only crop on an international market that's consistent with its highs and lows. At this moment, we're in a, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, a, a major slump, but mm -hmm. it, still, it still provides the income. But the problem comes with that is that it's growing so fast, and yet we're not developing, we don't have any more land. You know, we're not buying more land, we don't have the capital to buy more land. We don't want to clear more land. Mm -hmm. um, so it means that we need to become more, much more efficient and much more uh, diversified Diversify. and to be highly trained. And that's where we're facing the biggest challenges. Um, the government of Costa Rica uh, started 20 years ago a um, worldwide campaign to put our work in sustainability on top of mind for the governments from all over the world and, you know, everybody. And they understood that without the indigenous community, it won't happen. Because the sustainability is not only environmental impact. Exactly. It's yes. sustainability, social, economic, environmental. All the three together, joining forces. And one of the, the main uh, fights or, you know, uh, ideas that we tried to move into the international community was the payment for environmental services. You know, that the, the carbon, the trees, the beauty, the water, everything. And we had to design a special tool for indigenous communities because it's different to certify or to, to provide an, a payment for a landowner, regular landowner, than to an indigenous communities. Mm -hmm. Because when you do that, you put an extra value for the cultural and traditional mm -hmm. heritage. Yeah. That's what Paraguay doesn't have at the moment. So uh, we understood that their presence is so important. It's so important. And they can't be, you know, left behind. Sí. Yo también conozco comunidades indígenas que se convirtieron. Sí, sí. Se convirtieron en monoculturistas. Sí. Sí. Ah, baje todo. Y porque queremos mandar a los chicos a la universidad y sí. queremos dejar el campo lo más pronto posible porque esto es solo sufrimiento. Sí. De todo. O sea, conozco los extremos. Pero sí. cuando la gente realmente está comprometida con preservar su entorno, ¿a quién le gusta vivir en un lugar contaminado? No, no. no lo más básico, ¿no? Entonces sí, estoy segura. Ojalá algún día lo podamos medir, pero estoy segura de que son carbono neutral por naturaleza. Interesante. No, porque hay, hay biomasa. Sí, hay suficiente biomasa. Se preserva más de mitad de la tierra en, en bosque virgen. So, I think that the work with the Asia community is uh, a wonderful opportunity for these cooperatives to show how sensitive they are about the social issues and to support the work they're doing at the cultural conservation and development uh, areas so so i, I still it's hard to, for me to understand how you don't work together since the very beginning <laughs> but i think it's a huge opportunity for both of you to finally reach sustainable livelihoods. That's what we all want. That's what we all need. And to achieve enough results to show to the world and to prove the impact that you are achieving.
right now we are at a property that's 15 kilometers away from Puerto Bata. And what's interesting is that we drove by this sign which is Area de Bosque Certificado, which means that this is a certified forest right here. There's a lot of agricultural plantations nearby this this region. So I'm I'm just wanting to ask um, Bjarne and uh, Felipe Cajagi uh, what they think about the fact that forest certification is here but it hasn't been given to them as an indigenous group in Paraguay. I don't know, it, maybe the complications, the complexities are more than we understand, but it is a little bit uh, disquieting to say the least. Mano de Kwagogi, Kwikari. That's it. So we, we also had a chance to talk to the mayor of Naranjal, uh, Eduardo, and in those conversations he was really supportive of the Ache and their journey in getting forest certification, and uh, definitely really interesting to hear from his side of the story. Why is this even here? Naranjal is actually one of the few uh, municipalities that has actually supported the Ache. Puerto Bata is nearby three different municipalities and the other two really haven't contributed significantly and, and that much. So I just wanted to clarify that about Naranjal is, is at least this community is trying to do something. Um, the co-op that partners with Puerto Bata is also from this municipality. Yo creo que en primer lugar es, es muy loable lo que está, es que es la preservación. Yo creo que eso también un poco está en la cultura porque de ahí venía la comida del, del bosque, del monte, de la planta, de los animales y todo eso. Entonces eso es espectacular. Eh, hablamos mucho de la preservación del ambiente, y, pero estamos haciendo muy poco respondiendo en eso. El puerto Barra tiene tanto de agricultura, tiene tanto de animales, pero tiene preservado una área muchísimo mayor que la reserva legal que exige por ley y por eso tiene que recibir sus beneficios. Entonces recibiendo esos beneficios, eso se va a convertir en cubrir las necesidades básicas, en alimento, en ropa, en vivienda, o sea, en todas las necesidades que tenemos en la comunidad. Eso es extremadamente necesario. Yo creo que en la avenida acá se tuvo una reunión con el ministro y nosotros también le comentamos de ese tema. Eh, vemos que también a veces dentro de los ministerios hay una situación, una cadena de funcionarios que están hace años ahí corriendo y que a veces solamente la fuerza del ministro no es suficiente, pero sí hay que estar continuamente eh, apretando eso y creo que es una cosa que tendría y tiene que solucionarse durante ese año 2019 porque ya se viene arrastrando durante mucho tiempo y la gente no puede esperar. No hay como esperar. Las necesidades son cosas diarias. Entonces no podemos decir, mira, espera tranquilito ahí que vamos a comer dentro de cinco años. Si quien preserva es, por ejemplo, Puerto Barra. Tantas centenas de hectáreas que están ahí preservadas. Y los recursos tienen que llegar a la comunidad. We need people to set some of these political differences aside and work for the, the greater good of a community 
that has just come out of the forest 40 years ago. They're making an astoundingly complex transition. And this is where, you know, this is our heart cry is like, please, we need someone to actually be here on the long term mm -hmm. beyond just your political, you know, or, or ideological uh, uh, objectives. There are many ways that people can help partner with Puerto Barra moving forward that really do help them in the long term. And you can't just give rom romanticized, idealistic solutions. They have to be practical things that really help the community move forward. And that's the point. And forest certification <laughs> can do that very thing. It's one, of the, it's one of these solutions that was actually practical. So why are you, why are you letting it go? <laughs>